The long-awaited third entry in the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel subseries has made its way to the West, aptly named as the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3. Cold Steel 3, naturally speaking, takes place after Cold Steel 2, if that numbering convention confused anyone. That said, while of Cold Steel 1 you can get by with no knowledge of previous entries of the franchise, towards the end of Cold Steel 2 you'll be spoiling yourself for the Crossbell arc. Here in Cold Steel 3, everything is being brought to the forefront, so it would be best if you played everything before now, even if certain marketing materials tell you it's okay to jump in now. The game on its own, sure, maybe, but it will be pretty obvious throughout the game, especially in the first half that you're missing something. The franchise has such a grand story that it's absolutely worth going through the Trails in the Sky trilogy and the Crossbell duology before this. Now, going into the content of the actual game here, this takes place a year after Cold Steel 2. The old Class 7 has graduated, and Reen is a war hero known as the Ashen Chevalier. Due to his workings in the annexing of the neighboring country of Crossbell, and the usage of his divine knight, Valimar. A new task awaits Reen this year, and that's being a school teacher at the newly created Sora's Academy branch campus. That's right! Despite just graduating, he's now a teacher at the school in charge of Class 7. With that in mind, the plot progression is exactly like that of Cold Steel 1, so as Reen, you'll be helping out your fellow students of Class 7, Class 8, and Class 9, your fellow teachers and principal, and of course, residents of Leaves. From there, you'll have to go through a mini dungeon of sorts, sort of like a labyrinth under the school in Cold Steel 1, but this is specifically for combat training purposes and not exploration purposes. Usually a mech battle, and then of course the real meat of the chapter, the field exercise. If you remember field studies from Cold Steel 1, it's the exact same thing, but just under a different name. So, just like with school, you'll be helping out townspeople and the person in charge of the area you'll be visiting. Not only that, but you'll also be receiving orders from the Imperial government with them having you do something only the Asha and Chevalier can do. Overall, throughout your adventure, you'll be visiting places that connects this game to not only the Crossbell arc, but even Trails in the Sky. So if you haven't played the other games, that's fine. But I highly implore that you find some means to play through the other games. It makes scenes like this that matter all the heavier. It's so they can't go and save the day! The special support section, the heroes of the past, are now nothing more than a nuisance to the Empire! But they can't charge them with anything and lock them up, because that would anger all the dear little citizens. So they're just going to stop them from helping, making them slowly fade from people's minds, until they're completely forgotten! Though, in actuality, they could wipe those nobodies out at any time if they really wanted to. <sighs> Kinda leaves a bad taste in my mouth, though. Always wanted to go around with the Divine Blade of Wind. Yuna... Are you alright? Well, the immediate threat has passed, but... I suppose it's time for our hero to get to work. <laughs> you... Why? Yuna? What are you... Why? Why are you all trying to take away our pride? You occupied us, dragged us into your war with Calvert, brought those horrible cannons into our country, and now our light, our one last hope. Give it back! Give us our crossbell back! The free city where anyone could dream! Give it back!
As an instructor, you're in charge of the new Class 7 that's in charge of special operations. Your students include Juna Crawford, a Crossbell native. As you've seen in the clip beforehand, she hasn't taken the fact that her country was taken from her in a day very well. And that the war hero is her teacher, which makes tensions between both of you all the higher. You also have Kurt Vander of the Vander family. You've met his relatives before, however, after the Civil War, the Vander family has no longer a duty to protect the royal family. As such, with new doors open to him, he's now trying to find his own path. Lastly, there's Altina Orion to serve as a friendly face that you know in this new branch campus. Everyone meshes together pretty well. What's even better is that the other classmates get in on the action as well. Like Ash from Class 8, Combat Tactics, and Muse from Class 9, Military Finance. As always, the Trails franchise is just the best when it comes to its world building, even outside of its main story. It still amazes me that after every time of day shift that there isn't a single NPC whose dialogue doesn't change, and it makes talking to everyone seem like a treat instead of a chore. Overall, outside of battle, things haven't changed much outside of the following welcome quality of life improvements. Before, hidden quests were, well, hidden. Now they're not and they're marked in green on the map. This certainly helps considering an old friend asks for pictures of your adventures for her news reporting, and another needs some scoops for his radio show. Everyone's Arxis has been upgraded to an Arxis 2, and this brings a huge upgrade by adding the ability to be able to equip a second Master Quartz. The secondary one doesn't level up as fast, and it doesn't give all the stat boosts it provides, and you only have access to its first ability, but you still have access to all the arts it provides. Before you could sneak up on enemies to get an advantage in combat, you can stun them to get a double advantage, and now you can use a long range assault attack to get a triple advantage. Blade is old and busted, and Vantage Masters is the new hotness, according to the kids these days. And truth be told, this is a seriously well thought out card game, as you actually have to build a deck and think about what to summon and what skills to use. Fishing is now a lot easier, as you now have to hold down circle when appropriate and try and reel the fish in using the left stick, versus what was before just mashing away at the right buttons at the right time. Now in battle, things have gone through quite the overhaul. Gone is circling through the menu to get to what you want, as everything is now available at the press of a button. Juna's weapons actually allow her to change styles. Striker style increases stats and hits one target harder, whereas gunner style hits multiple units at once. The ability to spam Valimar has been removed as well as the ability to use Overdrive. In turn, you have Brave Orders. Using Brave Orders costs Brave Points that you receive while combat linking. Each member of the party, even when not active in battle, has the ability to use them, unless they're knocked out specifically. And they're generally powerful buffs that last for a limited amount of time. Outside of that, the biggest change in combat is the new break system. Coming over from Falcom's other games, the break system essentially gives you another way to attack the opponent. Naturally, any damage you do to an enemy will attack their HP, but will now attack their break gauge as well. Once broken, an enemy's next move is delayed, and even then they're immobile upon their recovering turn. They'll be taking more damage, and any buffs they receive are now gone, and all of this triggers a combat link. Some attacks are better at attacking the break gauge than others, so strategize appropriately. Once a strong enemy or boss has enough fooling around, they'll go into an enhanced state. This state may increase their stats, heal HP, or even give buffs. All of this is dependent on the enemy. The effect may only last for a couple of turns, but for those who aren't ready, this may be devastating. But there is a bright side to this. They are also more prone to breaking in this state, so be on your toes. Other than that, all of the other battle mechanics are still in place. So you can see when a buff or debuff is about to appear in battle, and on what turn it'll be on. You still have the ability to use link attacks when appropriate, and of course, your arts and crafts are all here as well. How they work has not changed. Graphically speaking, the Vita chains are no more, and the difference is massive. That said, by Falcom's own admission at this point, they're doing things that the current engine isn't built for, so hopefully they decide to upgrade their engine soon. Of course, as things are now, everything is pretty good. The game looks really nice, and it's at a very stable 60 FPS on the PS4 Pro. That said, the soundtrack isn't a slouch either. Falcom JDK continues to rock the house with their amazing music that I can never get enough of. One last thing to point out is, well, the localization, because I know a lot of you will be asking a lot of questions about that. So if you're worried about the lo localization, well, if you're able to get the day one patch, you should be good to go. 
if not, then yeah, there will be some text and even sound related problems in a similar vein to that of Ease 8, albeit nowhere near as bad. But again, if you're able to download the day one patch, you should be good to go. Overall, by the time my well over 100 hour experience of this game was finished, I felt an immense dread knowing I'm going to have to wait quite some time for the final entry in Cold Steel to come to the West, especially after an ending like that one. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3 is one of my favorite games this year, and Falcom just continues to show why they're one of the best JRPG makers around. And that does it for our review of The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3. If you have any comments or questions about the game or the review, please by all means leave them down in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you guys on this. If you're new to my channel, finding me out for the first time through this review, hey, be sure to subscribe for future reviews, commentaries, let's plays, and more. And also, be sure to check out our other reviews of The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2, which should be showing up on the screen right about now. And finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon and YouTube members for making today's review possible. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching.